It's six o'clock and the job is done But I'm not going anywhere cause this is too much fun okay. I'm reminded every time I see a precision grade That this is probably the best decision I've ever made Yeah! Caterpillar Incorporated entered the NASCAR Cup Series looking to bulldoze the competition with their dozer. Moving up the ladder at Howard E. McCall Jr.'s American Equipment Racing Team following a successful Bush Series tenure with David Green. The 1994 season champion helped Caterpillar claim its first two NASCAR victories at Hickory and Myrtle Beach. With just two finishes 20 at their worst, Green held the points lead for a majority of the season holding a 57-point cushion over Randy LaJoy with just three races left in the 1996 championship fight. And with a sponsor like Caterpillar and its expertise in high-value machinery, Green will be plowing instead of the opposite. I think he's got this one in the bag. Too loose. Lanigan is in the wall. Cars everywhere. You know, I believe that might have been David Green that come by and clipped him. I think it was. David Green's car has clipped Lanigan spinning in turn three. David Green and Caterpillar would finish a heartbreaking second in the NASCAR Busch Series standings with his season-killing plow job by Darrell Lanigan. Now, they would look to redevelop the real estate known as the NASCAR Cup Series Garage with the American Equipment Racing Team leveling up to the big show. Their blueprint, however, would get smeared in a big way, failing to qualify for the Daytona 500 as well as Texas, Martinsville, and Sonoma to open the season. This was primarily a season of growing pains for the Rookie Cup driver and Rookie Cup team, failing to finish better than 16th on top of 5 DNQs and 5 DNFs. The team and sponsor Caterpillar hoped these trials and tribulations would provide as a stepping stone to a successful 1998 season, beginning the season by, you guessed it, failing to qualify for the Daytona 500 once again. David Green would have a cataclysmic next 11 races showing no signs of driver development, leaving McCall to make the decision to part ways with the 1994 Bush champion in favor of a Swiss Army knife of drivers including Steve Grissom, Kevin LePage, and Hutch Strickland. None of which helped Sammy Johns in his efforts to dig a strong team foundation and hit the ground running. The company was not visible to NASCAR fans. You could say this was similar to the crisis Caterpillar as a company had in the 1930s with their machinery, which was hard to spot on road construction sites in both day and night. That meant change was needed. Caterpillar decided to scrap their endeavor with American Equipment Racing, crushing their NASCAR ambitions as they were forced to cease operations without a primary sponsor funding the team. So now the question was, just what team would act as that Caterpillar Yellow? make the brand aesthetically pleasing to NASCAR fans and provide them with the best visibility on television through weeks and weeks of racing. For this, Caterpillar was feeling 22, replacing the black and green colors of MBNA America to sponsor Ward Burton's ride at Bill Davis Racing. This was a driver that simply did not get a lot of attention during the holidays thanks to his brother Jeff's frequent winning. Regardless, Burton was moving the Bill Davis team forward, coming off a career best points finish in 1998. And it is safe to say Caterpillar got exactly what they desired out of Bill Davis Racing. 1999 was far from a horrible year for the Caterpillar driver except for one haunting statistic. He finished second three times. All three of those were to his little brother. At Las Vegas and Rockingham, he was the pass for the win. It's also safe to say he finished second in the battle for the final slice of pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. Ward Burton would use that hunger as motivation to put up a better 2000 as the Caterpillar driver, leading 288 laps in the first five races. That caliber of performance is what gets you wins in this series. And finally, at Darlington, Ward Burton got the job done. Caterpillar was officially a winning sponsor in the NASCAR Cup Series. It was evident that Bill Davis Racing Pontiacs had the speed to compete with Dale Earnhardt and Bobby Labonte, sitting just 82 points out of the lead following race 13 at Dover. Burton was on track for more than just a career year. The second half would give them an ending they did not expect, earning just 6 top 10 finishes in the final 17 races including 8 finishes outside the top 20. But at least he was going to end the year strong with a win at Atlanta, right? Oh, 
track and gets loose, and look at him charge toward the front of the field as Nadu in November of 2000. Jerry Nadu wins the final race. Wood Burton's crazy outcome in the chutes and ladders game known as the NASCAR standings ended with the chute, sliding all the way down to 10th in the final standings, far from where they were desiring back in May. Perhaps it was all due to 2000 being a bit of a lame duck year. Now Ward Burton and Tommy Baldwin Jr. were not going anywhere, especially with the success they were starting to get. Rather, the entrance of Dodge as the fourth manufacturer would lure in the Bill Davis team, switching to Ram Power for 2001 and beyond. The move would be successful for Ward Burton in the 2001 Southern 500 as he overtook Bobby Labonte late in the race to snag his first ever crown jewel victory. As for the rest of the season, their blueprint was a hard one to put into action. The long winter would lead into the 2002 Daytona 500. Ward Burton had to deal with a lot of dirty air in this race from the Coors Light driver Sterling Marlin, but the thing you have to remember about this Caterpillar team is they can take this on. After all, their compact track loaders can carry 11,000 pounds of weight. Sure, it seemed like it was Sterling Marlin's race to lose, but this Caterpillar team could take on the dirty air. And lo and behold, cautions and restarts would prove to be a petri dish for chaos. With one swoop, both Gordon and Marlin were out, and it left Burton and the Caterpillar team in the Katberg seat to win the Harley J. Earl Trophy. And finally, after watching Jeff carry the bragging rights for all those family get-togethers, Ward would finally be the center of attention for that upcoming Easter. Ward Burton, Tommy Baldwin Jr., and the Bill Davis team were Daytona 500 champions. Meanwhile, Caterpillar was a Daytona 500 winning sponsor, the mecca of all motorsports victories. In terms of sponsorship success, the Caterpillar was stuffed full. They could go on a bit of a winless stroke, just as long as that does not span a few decades, am I right? He would nab one more victory that season at Loudoun, but after that, this team was extremely Jekyll Hyde. No race summed up this Caterpillar team more than the Spring Richmond race. Boy, that was a heartbreaker in his home state. That performance would lead to some mismatched numbers for the Cat Driver. Two wins, 371 laps led, 25th in the final point standings. Ward Burton continued his fall off in 2003, scoring just four top tens and ranking 21st when Bill Davis stunned him by relieving him of his driving duties after race 32 at Martinsville. As Ward Burton would say, it's been a crazy week and a lot has happened. I've had a lot of very successful years at Bill Davis Racing. At the same time, sometimes circumstances arise that you don't have control over and it's time to move on. The Caterpillar team was bulldozed to get a head start on the 2004 season, turning to their talented Bush Series prospect Scott Wimmer to represent the Caterpillar Yellow Well. And he reacted well with Yellow alright getting arrested for drunk driving just as the time was crunch time in terms of the NASCAR offseason. As the case fizzled out, Scott Wimmer carried on as the team's driver. Frank Stoddard's brilliant strategy for the Daytona 500 got the 22 team in the lead, hoping to join the Morgan McClure Kodak No. 4 as the little guys to tame the big race more than once. That would not be the case. For the lead, Wimmer to block. But I don't think it's going to work. The Bill Davis 22 lost the Daytona 500, but nonetheless, the third place finish, especially with a rookie driver that just got a DUI charge, is something to take pride in. The Caterpillar team proved it could come back from controversy. Unfortunately, one week later, it was back to the trenches. The masterful strategy in the Daytona 500 was not enough to save Frank Stoddard's job, as the team fell outside the top 25 in owner's points and even failed to qualify for the Atlanta race. Caterpillar's first DNQ on the job with Bill Davis. So out was Frank Stoddard, in was Derek Finley. And it turns out this guy could work for NASA judging off of Scott Wimmer's performance in the 2005 Daytona 500, soaring like a rocket launched straight from the Kennedy Space Center. After that, Derek Finley did not offer much other than the initial launch, as Caterpillar was back to where they were with the American equipment team and Bill Davis knew it was time for changes. In the last couple of years, we just haven't seen the performance we know the number 22 cat racing team is capable of, so change was not a choice. It was a necessity. Scott Wimmer in the NASCAR Silly Season Frenzy got kerplunked as the Caterpillar driver. Now, getting rid of Wimmer was not the issue. 
subbing him in for Dave Blaney was. This driver was arguably the biggest loser in NASCAR history. Zero Cup wins, zero Bush wins, zero Truck wins, and zero Southwest Series wins. This was more of a move that looked to improve team chemistry and consistency rather than winning races according to team owner Bill Davis. Dave is not only a talented and consistent driver, but he is someone I respect and have always enjoyed working with in the past. With that, Dave Blaney, Crew Chief Kevin Hamlin, and the entire 22 team are ready to tackle the 2006 NASCAR Cup Series season. A campaign that produced just two top 10 finishes total. An impressive drive during the chase races at Richmond and Loudoun. He ended the season 26th in points, but on the plus side, Blaney got the team finishes, and the 22 team was trending in the right direction. This team had a lot of tread left, similar to the D9 Caterpillar Dozer with a C18 engine. And 2007 would see that team take a risk and switch to foreign manufactured nameplate Toyota. Now was Dave Blaney's best chance to stand out as a cup driver that could win, and he would do so in a big way in the Great American Race. He gets forced into the pit lane. Here's what I don't think he realizes. He's got a flat right front tire. 150 miles an hour, Blaney is trying to scrub off speed. And just nowhere for Ken Schrader, the 21 car, to go. The day Blaney era was all downhill from that bonehead move. Blaney's average finish was five positions worse than his start in 2007, including three DNQs. 2008 was more of the same, putting the Cat-sponsored team at a crossroads yet again. This Caterpillar was still hungry for NASCAR success, but found itself starved of the victory lane sensation. It came to the realization that it would not blossom into a beautiful butterfly with Bill Davis racing. Caterpillar would kill off its second race team considering their funding alone was keeping the Bill Davis racing dream alive on life support. With some new sponsorship vacancies arising in the NASCAR Cup Series that had been plagued by the 2008 financial crisis, Caterpillar would become the primary sponsor at Richard Childers Racing. An organization that saw its 31 team get screwed financially as Sprint took an authoritarian style approach to its NASCAR Cup Series title sponsorship, barring rivaling phone companies, AT&T included, from having a presence in the series. This was a golden opportunity for Caterpillar as this RCR team was coming off of a chase appearance and a two-win season. So just who was the driver you ask? It was a driver Caterpillar was all too familiar with, the younger brother of Ward Burton and the guy that haunted the company throughout the entirety of 1999, Jeff Burton. The mayor was ready to declare Caterpillar as a Championship Cup Series sponsor, sitting 10th in the chase picture as the regular season hit its halfway mark. It's just too bad RCR just had to be a living nightmare in 2009. Jeff Burton was originally numbed from the pain Harvick, Boyer, and Mears had to suffer, but in the summer stretch, the Caterpillar 31 team suffered the most painful fate of them all, seeing their hard work in the spring bulldozed and far from repair. Scott Miller's team finished 17th in the points and extended Caterpillar's winless drought to seven years. Despite the effects of the 2008 financial crisis, Caterpillar continued to funnel millions into their NASCAR Cup Series team, the 31 car for the second season. Jeff Burton hoped that new crew chief Todd Barrier would act as a blockade from all the bad luck and ill performance they had in 2009, guiding him instead towards a bounce back year to the wishes of Caterpillar. And you could tell Richard Childress Racing they did their homework as Jeff Burton re-qualified for the chase, placing as high as third in the regular season. Only one problem, Jeff Burton did not win a race, mainly due to his self-inflicting wounds at Phoenix where he pitted outside the box in Texas where he got a commitment cone violation. At least those were the only mistakes by Jeff Burton. Check that, the Caterpillar driver also pulled a bonehead move on the veteran and four-time NASCAR Cup Series champion you do not want to rattle the cage of. You know what time it is. Time to go get your chassis kicked by Jeff Gordon. Yeah, go get him, buddy. As much as the driver nicknamed Big Daddy may be old and have back problems, he knocked the daylights out of the Caterpillar driver and you could tell, as Jeff Burton had a subpar 2011 season and he didn't get his first top 10 of the season until August. Todd Barrier's barrier was also crushed, getting ousted as crew chief in favor of Luke Lambert. 
So the season was officially a lost cause, but the 2011 Good Sam 500 held out hope for that one day where Caterpillar would be on the top of the mountain. It was finally time, boys, for the Caterpillar curse to come to an end, and you could sense it in the cockpit of Jeff Burton. And I'm not gonna let anyone get in my way! I'm a failure. After all that hard work, I'm sorry, All Might. I'm sorry, Mom. Make that an entire decade without a points Pain Cup Series victory, and a third with one of the best teams in the garage. Caterpillar rolled out a new livery for the 2012 season, this one with a lot more yellow since they probably knew it was not going to get much TV time. Jeff Burton was starting to age like that Prairie Farms milk. As much as Caterpillar had great ties with the Burton family, he was like that milk carton your mom thinks is still good but the expiration date is well over 10 days. And this is not a knock on Jeff Burton's driving, that's just how NASCAR Cup drivers fare as they hit their late 40s. The Burton Era Part 2 had officially reached its end, and for the most part, it was an underwhelming five years. That is an extreme failure considering the expectations they had going in. Caterpillar was now riding an 11-year winless streak as a primary sponsor. Their next driver of the Caterpillar 31 had some pressure to perform, so who better than the Boilermaker Ryan Newman? Perhaps the most fitting brand ambassador this company ever had for its NASCAR program. The resume speaks for itself. Daytona 500 winner, Brickyard 400 winner, 51 career NASCAR Cup Series polls to his name. Ryan Newman knew the value of getting his hands dirty and had the toughness to get the job done. Newman grinded hard in the first 26 races of the regular season to qualify tied for the 14th seed in the new elimination style playoff format. The Caterpillar team had a huge advantage with their tough work ethic that kept them through the first rounds where the likes of Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, and the Bush brothers faltered. In the round of eight, the Arizona desert was no sweat for this team. These guys are experts working hard and thriving in the heat. It took a bit of work to plow Kyle Larson out of the way, but they had done it. The 31 faced the pressure head-on, knocked out a lot of championship favorites to advance to the inaugural NASCAR Championship 4. All that was left was one 400-mile race in Homestead, Miami. Win that race, and not only would the Caterpillar curse end, but the Cat Racing team ends the season as NASCAR champions. Also, the media gets to dunk on NASCAR for allowing a winless driver to take the Sprint Cup after emphasizing wins and wins only. Richard Childers Racing would step up to the task and give the Rocket Man a shot at this big accomplishment, lining up neck and neck with their former franchise driver, Kevin Harvick, on the final restart. Unfortunately, the Cinderella run would strike midnight. He's going to win the race and the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship. California's Kevin Harvick does it. Ryan Newman crossed the finish line in second place. The Caterpillar curse extended to its 12th season and its sixth with the RCR 31. The misfortunate legacy was a lie, but at least for a moment, the Caterpillar team was competitive and noticed by millions as a championship was in reach. 2015 would feature a similar tone for Ryan Newman and Luke Lambert, grinding through the regular season and qualifying once again for the bracket-style postseason, one that would be chaotic, and unfortunately it was once again Kevin Harvick bulldozing the ambitions and dreams of the Caterpillar team into a pile of smoke and sheet metal. The Talladega Chaos knocked out Ryan Newman in the round of 12, and later, Caterpillar's curse would extend to 13 years without a points pain victory. Still, the driver and team, they were not the issue with this team. It was Richard Childress Racing just not having enough to take on the likes of Hendrick and Gibbs. And 2016 was more the same. Ryan Newman was nowhere near close to victory and had to depend on a last-ditch Hail Mary at Richmond to keep the Cat Racing team season alive. It would end as you expect from a Caterpillar sponsored car. Uh, I only hit him in turn one when he cut across my nose, so I don't think there was any reason other than him just being bipolar and having anger issues. So, well, uh, I mean, he's, you can look up, you can Google, Google Tony Story, you'll see all kinds of things he's done. Look it up on YouTube, everything else. Quite the guy. All right, Ryan Newman, let's Google Tony Stewart. What I'm getting is 49 career wins in three championships. I mean, that's a lot more than what the Caterpillar team has done since 2002. Ryan Newman would use that as motivation for 2017, and guess what? Sure, it took some brilliant strategy by Luke Lambert to pull it off, but Ryan Newman, believe it or not, put the 31 car back into victory lane for the first time since 2008. Caterpillar was back in victory lane, but there was a catch. Of course there's always a catch with a Caterpillar team. You had to squint just to see the cat placement on this car, because guess what? Granger was the primary sponsor for this race, meaning the Caterpillar primary sponsorship curse was still on and running. 
unfortunately kept racing would get their shot at revenge during the instant gratification wreck fest known as the 2017 Talladega Fall Race. Lining up alongside Brad Keselowski for the race's final restart. Alrighty guys, we got history on the line. Let's get out the popcorn, the Mountain Dew, the Skittles, and let's see how this one goes. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. The tricky triangle, they're about to come through. Contact go. made. Keselowski still in front. Through the trial, but they go. Keselowski's going to win at Talladega. 15 years. No points paying wins. Maybe it was there where the Caterpillar executives looked at what a failing endeavor this was turning out to be. The company would renew its sponsorship for a 10th season, but with a catch. They would give up their role as primary sponsor to Bass Pro Shops Cabela's and sponsor only 8 races, less than a fourth of the season, for the intriguing 2018 NASCAR Cup Series season. Among the minuscule calendar of races, Newman performed the best at the Spring Talladega race, placing 9th. He would earn just two more top 15s with the far from Caterpillar norm white and black livery on the Chevrolet Camaro, showing signs that the Ryan Newman RCR tenure had run its course. For the seventh full-time driver for Cat Racing, the company would find another perfect fit in Daniel Hemrick. His blue collar work for everything he's got climbed in the NASCAR Cup Series ladder would help the company sell a lot of machinery and financial products to like-minded customers. And since, of course, the 31 car was brewing a misfortunate legacy, RCR decided to change the number to the number 8. Meanwhile, the 2019 schedule would feature 10 races to get back to victory lane, including two co-primary races with Bass Pro Shops. Now, did he win? Of course not, with a nightmarish 2019 season for Richard Childers Racing. It. Was. Bad. Hemrick's two top 10s did come with the Caterpillar color, so they didn't get the worst of it, but this A-team did not finish races, and they regressed to a 25th place finish in the point standings. You've got to admit, this was far from Hemrick's fault, given that he was a winless NASCAR driver on a struggling team, but guess what, that did not matter. Daniel Hemrick was one and done for the Cat Racing team. Richard Childress would choose to hit the rebuild button by bringing up the wall-riding Xfinity champion Tyler Reddick to the NASCAR Cup Series. This right here was Caterpillar's best chance to break their winless shot of 18 seasons, not just because of the talent. Also coming with Reddick was his crew chief from the Xfinity series, which was Randall Burnett and the entire two team that helped him win that championship in magnificent fashion. They say in racing it not only takes the best equipment, but the best people to win. Certainly the Cat Racing team had some great people with on-the-job experience with a championship car hoping to achieve their goal of sweet victory. The Cat Yellow and Black would get 17 primary races on the number 8 for the year we all thought was not even real. And maybe that's because the Caterpillar car was semi-competitive for once, most notably during the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500 at Texas. The RCR strategy room got their thinking caps on to capitalize on a late race cautioned by Christopher Bell. With 21 laps to go, Tyler Reddick had the lead. And given the fact that passing at Texas was as common as selling chicken wings at a Caterpillar dealership, this race was over. Caterpillar was going to break the drought with no worries about losing this race. You could take this bet to the house, right? Dylan hugging the white line. He's going to surge out in front. He's going to win at Texas. Austin Dillon gets the win. You blew it! Leave it to the Caterpillar team to bulldoze the perfect plan. Despite a decent 2020 season, Caterpillar would remain starred of its long-craved points pain victory. Leading into 2021, Tyler Reddick now at a year of seasoning, and it would show in the second half of the year. At Las Vegas, Reddick had the hot wheels to race with the playoff guys, not only physically, but literally. Taking the lead and trying to ride the loop of strategy to win his first career race and Caterpillar's first since 2002. The A-team was hoping for more than just Caterpillar Yellow, something they would not get. Well, unfortunately for Tyler Reddick, it was a two-second gap, but here's Hamlin coming by at 180 miles an hour, and there is Tyler Reddick on the apron. Four weeks later, the Hollywood Casino 400 would act as the sixth and final primary race for Caterpillar in the 2021 season. With many playoff contenders battling the wind, it opened the door for the tough-as-nails Caterpillar team to capitalize. And that was evident with Tyler Reddick's driving on that afternoon, making an aggressive move to surge ahead of the Hendrick teammates Larson and Byron. He had the lead. 
Tyler Reddick has pointed out in the past that sometimes his aggression gets the best of him, but that will not happen today. Caterpillar's been in their cocoon for so long, and right now, this is their time to break through. Truex, slow on the racetrack on the bottom of the screen. He's coming to pit road. Tyler Reddick. I'm sorry. I had Truex on the mind. Little smoke there also coming out from behind the eight. I had Truex on the mind because I believe, I thought at the beginning of this race, it was a must win situation. I was wrong. Look. Oh boy, another heartbreaking loss to extend the Caterpillar curse to season 19. Fortunately, the future seemed bright for the Cat Racing team, even in their reduced role. Tyler Reddick was going places, and the 8 team was at its most competitive state since Cat signed on to this project in 2009. If they stick with them, you just know this partnership would blossom like a butterfly. I mean, even McDonald's broke their curse. The same will happen to Caterpillar, just trust the process. As the number 8 team sponsorship was solidified in January with the addition of new primary sponsor 3G, one sponsor was absent from the fully funded team. First pointed out on the RCR website and confirmed by the team, Caterpillar would not have any primary races on the number 8 car, although oddly enough they would still be a partner of Richard Childers Racing. That means without a Caterpillar car on track this season, this will be the 20th anniversary since their last win in NASCAR, which was with Ward Burton all the way back in 2002 at Loudoun. Even as they had some proven race runners at one of the better teams, the Cat Racing team mustered only four points paying wins in a quarter century of NASCAR sponsorship. It's a shame that the Caterpillar yellow on this car was more of a warning to competitors as a hazard rather than a dangerous team that can win weekly. Because the Cat Racing team had the loyalty and hard work to succeed. Misfortunately, it was rarely rewarded with a pack of Bud Light just as the farmer would have after getting some good use out of his Caterpillar AG Hangler. So anyways, this is Nathan for NRF Productions signing out and just remember guys and gals, life's a beach and then you drive. Yeah. Look at me and my dozer, wanna be in my dozer, carefree in my dozer. Yeah, my day is over, but I stay in my dozer, lay in my dozer. Yeah, I love my job, cause work to me is like play in my dozer. Slow persist helps hide the fact that I forgot my glasses. The roads I grade score so high, call them over. Passes.